Hi, Erica. Hi. What would you like to talk about today? Um, well, just, just about how to stay, um, I don't know, I can't really explain it. I can't really explain it. Um, just, you know, how to think positive, how to know, know what, know what you want and then continue to stay positive and regardless of um, what I've been through you know, to allow those things to let go, to cleave, and, and not constantly allow them to dictate my life. So, uh, what what do you mean when you say when you say staying positive? Can you tell me a little bit? About yeah, that? sometimes when sometimes when I feel you know overwhelmed, uh, I, I tend to um, think the worst, overanalyze. You know, make make the problem bigger than what it really is, and sometimes that causes a lot of distress, you know, on my part. So, uh, what I'm hearing you saying is that when you take the situation that you're currently in mm -hmm. and and over, I mean, and over -analyze, over analyze it, it, it kind of causes distress. Problems. Yeah, and it's just something to where it's it's just overwhelming and trying to stay positive um, for instance uh, you know when I was younger a lot of times when I would be um, involved with just um, you know situations I would think the worst you know I, knowing that I was about to get a whooping I was like man I'm about to get in trouble so like this anxiety would come up and I would feel kind of overwhelmed so is it kind of like what you're telling me that you're experiencing now? Yeah, I would say yeah, exactly. That's right. Okay, okay. So would would you say some of the things? Well, what would I mean? Kind of what what is taking place? Yeah, I guess, I'm not, yes. I guess I'm not. That's my fault. I guess okay. I'm not explaining it too much. I just I really seriously um, I have a hard time letting go of just you know. That emotional roller coaster that I went through as a child. You know? Okay. Yeah. So you think it's, some. Uh, so, so I want to kind of figure out how we can um, come up with the solution. I want to really seriously come up with the solution as to try to handle those things because a lot of them um, came back, you know, happened when I was a child, growing up, being adopted, and being different, you know what I mean? So. So when you say you want us to come up with a solution, do you mean me and you, you and I? I need your I need your help. Okay. I need your help and, and you know I just I just the solution. Yes. So can you tell me what do you expect out of the session? What do you expect from me out of this session that would help you to come up with some uh, ways of handling your stress? I want to get maybe. Some or your anxiety. My, my, just maybe some examples. Okay, okay. So what do you mean? You want me to relate some examples to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, how about you tell me? Okay. You, how about, let's do it like this. How about you relate to me and maybe some things that you, okay. yeah, that you, that you may think that would help you? Well, for instance, um, I can silence that voice inside. You know. okay. Immediately when that happens, I can really silence it and not allow it to dictate, you know, my life. And, and whenever um, it happens, I can just ignore it. Okay, so when so when that voice is present. Mm -hmm. What are some what are some things that you, so you found you find that ignoring it is helpful? Yeah, ignoring it that can be something that I can do. Um, stay positive. Realize that the thing that I'm going through is not the same thing that's ha actually happening. So what I hear you saying is when those negative thoughts come and that voice is playing in your head, then you you think that you know you. Tell me how you feel 
when that voice is playing in your head? Tell me what you're feeling at that time. That that reaction? Yes. Okay. Um, it's something that is more so overanalyzing the situation. Okay. Yeah. So the the biggest the biggest uh thing that you're dealing with is overanalyzing the yeah, situation. Yeah, just making it bigger than what it is. Bigger than what it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, just making it bigger than what it is and, and just really realizing that it's not as big as everyone's making it. Okay. And it'd be something this small, you know, get into something this big. Have you, Erica, have you ever just, when those thoughts or feelings is there, have you ever taken yourself out of that situation? And maybe thought of it, you know, as you looked at it, thought that, oh, I am blowing this up. So, <laughs> you know, it's not as bad as I think. Yeah, possibly. Okay. okay. I have, you know, I guess so. But, you know, it's just more so along the lines of just control. Okay. A reaction. A reaction. Okay. So you think that, so you feel that you need to be in control of that reaction instead of that reaction controlling you. Okay. Well, that's a good goal that we could work on. Yeah. So, so uh, I would I would want to ask you what you think about maybe uh, you taking home, you know, a, a, a journal mm-hmm. at night, and and when those feelings or thoughts arise, you know, doc, write down what you're feeling at that time. Okay. Write down what you're feeling, and what what's going on at the time when you're feeling it? Right. Okay. And I think that will help. You know that that'll that'll really help me a whole lot. Okay. Um, just to kind of relax. Okay. Do you do, do you journal? I do a lot. Do. I actually have like a really big book. Okay. Okay. So sometimes you know it's just uh, my thoughts. Okay. Do you find it to be helpful? Very. Okay. Okay. What do you think about journaling? Well, Erica, well, well, self-disclosure. I think it, it's a big a tool that is very helpful because I, too, have a journal. And when I'm feeling, you know, uh, emotions, that, emotions that I can't control or that I, you know, that's bothering me, then I journal. And it does help. It does. So I, I guess what I want to start doing is just journaling a lot because okay. it it does you know it does help and I don't feel so alone. Okay. You know I mean? So alone to where it's like. Uh, okay. So when you say you don't feel alone, what what are you what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Well, because I have abandoned issues. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and I think that kind of relates back to where when I was a child. That's why. You know, I was mentioning those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, do you think being abandoned as a child has a lot to do with your anxiety level? Probably. Okay. Why do you <laughs> feel that way? Well, experiences have a lot to do with it. I mean, just the surroundings that um, that I was raised around, my surroundings, and so not being without uh, a mother. Well, I was with a mother, but she was very strict. Okay. Very strict. Okay. So, can you tell me a little bit more about what type, because I hear you keep saying experiences and being alone, Mm -hmm. even though you had a mom. Abandoned. I'm sorry. Abandoned. A mom Even though you had a mom Mom. and a dad, you still felt abandoned. Did you, um, what age did you realize that you was adopted? When I realized that everybody was black and I was like black but light skin. Mm-hmm. I guess, you know, that makes sense. You put all these, like, and if you have five m ms and there's this, like, blue one, you know something's wrong. Why is it that blue? So that's kind of how I felt. Okay. Well, did you kind of like the, not ugly duckling, but just trying to fit in. Okay. Well, did your parents uh, talk with you about? I never did any response to that. You didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, 
Yeah. <laughs> well, because I just couldn't open up. I have emotions, you know. Mm-hmm. I have trust issues, and I felt that I could really handle it. Now, did the trust trust issues come from being abandoned or situations that you went through in your in your childhood? Oh, it's say just experiences. Okay. Yeah, just experiences. Okay. What type of experiences? I know. I know, but I, what type of experiences? <laughs> well, um, just, you know, just things that... But do you mind sharing your experiences? Sure. Or? Okay. 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 Sure. Absolutely. And... No, I just just experiences to where it's like um, thinking the words, you know, of being mm-hmm. abused and uh, just knowing that my mother was already dead, my biological mother. But I actually didn't know. I don't think I knew that she was dead. But somewhat kind of felt alone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So. The loneliness comes from when you, okay, when you, I mean. Knowing that I was adopted. Knowing that you was adopted. Yeah. And knowing that you was abandoned, Mm -hmm. it brings about the aloneness feeling. Something like that. So what do you do when you feel lonely, Eric? I read. You read? Or I, when I feel lonely, too, I do. Do you feel lonely when, you, even when you're in the presence of others? I feel well, not lonely, but I feel singled out. Singled out. I feel like not singled out, but you know, I just I don't fit in. Oh, okay. Don't fit in. I just I just don't fit in. But um, I'm a very very hard worker. Mm-hmm. Very very hard worker. You know, my experiences have have molded me into who I am today, I definitely don't look like what I did. You know, and so something to wear it's just you know, I like to help people too. Mm-hmm. I guess sometimes not doing something for myself, you know, can tend to kind of trigger um, that loneliness, not doing too much for myself. Okay. Okay, I can understand that. Okay. So uh, since it's near the end of our session for today, Erica, some things and goals that we did come together on as in, in this session is that you would journal when yes. you start to feel the stress and or the abandonment issue. Yes. I mean, the issues arise there, you would journal. Yes. And you love to read already, so read it and journaling. I and, stay busy. And stay, I busy. stay busy. Okay. Okay. So are those some things those are some things that we're gonna practice on. We're gonna, we're gonna you're gonna work on them. And when we come back together, we will talk about them and see where we where we how far we came. Okay? Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Okay.